everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm gonna be giving you a few more advices on how you can deal with your anxiety and this is a continuation from my video from the previous week when i've also been giving you a few advices on what to do when you feel really anxious so first of all we need to know what we are dealing with before we can do anything about it what you can do is write a list of those intrusive thoughts and the worries that you are experiencing and normally you're not gonna have hundreds of them there might be only few of them but they're gonna be quite repetitive they're gonna be negative and normally they're gonna be quite catastrophizing as well once we have them written we can actually assess them whether they are valid or not it is very likely that those thoughts they just became your default way of thinking about yourself about your surroundings about your future but it might be that this default way might be outdated and might not be as helpful anymore in your life. In order to check whether certain thoughts or worries are valid, you can actually challenge them. And one of the first things that you can ask it is, what is the likelihood that that thing that you're worrying about will happen? Is there any example from the past where maybe you worried about something very similar, you were catastrophizing, but then at the end, the thing that you were worrying about actually didn't happen. It is also very likely that when you're catastrophizing about something, you're thinking about the worst case scenario. So to challenge yourself, you can now think about the best case scenario. And hopefully by doing that, then you will realize that you might be falling into black and white way of thinking. And as a result of doing that exercise, you actually might be able to come up with more reasonable answer to your worries which will be the middle ground somewhere in between that best case scenario and the worst case scenario by challenging your negative thoughts by trying to see a different perspective of your worries allows you to have a bit more distance between you and them so you are not as enmeshed with them and then because of that we can also look at them through more critical lens the second one it is about pausing and taking break so at times when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel on edge, it might actually be enough for you to take a break, to pause. Anxiety really doesn't like that. Anxiety doesn't like when we connect with here and now. But that's what sometimes we need to do. We actually need to force ourselves to maybe have half an hour break and half a cup of tea or maybe go for a walk or maybe go sleep early anxiety really hates that anxiety wants us constantly to be in the future and think what's gonna happen tomorrow what's gonna happen after a week what's gonna happen after a year anxiety constantly asks us a questions that we're not gonna even have answer to and that's then as a result gonna make us feel anxious the next one is actually related to taking a break so at times when you feel really overwhelmed when you don't know what task to prioritize it's good to pause and write down all the tasks that you want to complete and once you have them written it is much easier than to know what has to be prioritized what has to be dealt with now and what can wait and be dealt with at later time the next one is also to do with writing down so at times when you feel overwhelmed with different tasks especially when you're in bed your mind is just racing reminding you of everything what you have to do tomorrow so that will be a good time for you to actually get up from bed and write down the list of the things that you're worrying about once you have them on the paper you might feel more assured that you're not gonna forget anything so that means you don't have to go over things in your mind the next one it is about scheduling time in a day when you can worry about important stuff and i know that might sound quite funny but actually it works for some people so when someone wants to really focus on some task and they cannot because their mind is just racing with all these different worries they can actually schedule for themselves time in a day when they can worry about so that means they kind of say to their mind that this is important to me i'm not gonna neglect those things i'm gonna worry about them but not just right now because now i need to focus on this and then 3 p.m maybe that's the time when you want to worry about everything and it is also very likely that when the time's gonna come you're actually not gonna even feel like you want to worry about this stuff the last one it is about avoiding avoidance it is very 
likely that if you are someone who's experienced anxiety, you're going to be avoiding certain people, certain activities and certain places because you know that if you go somewhere, your anxiety will be triggered. But by engaging with avoidance, you're becoming a slave to anxiety. In those situations, it could be actually helpful to start exposing yourself to those people, situations, activities that are causing you anxiety. I would definitely do it gradually and I would definitely do it with help of friends and family if that's possible. What could be also helpful with the exposure it is to actually keep record of that. So every time when you expose yourself, you measure the level of anxiety before and after. And every time you expose yourself to the same event, you take the score. And then that also helps you to keep record and see your progress. Because the more you expose yourself to the things that you fear, the level of fear is going to naturally decrease. What could be also helpful with the exposure experiment is to bring to awareness that yes, I'm gonna feel anxious, it will feel uncomfortable, but this is only temporary and anxiety will pass. That will be it for today. And if you enjoyed this video, then please like it, subscribe, and I'm gonna see you next week then. Thank you, bye-bye.